is an example of calculating what's the final in temperature and pressure that we might be able to obtain in an adiabatic compression. So we'll start round room temperature, one bar pressure, and let's assume we have 10 cubic centimeters that we're going to compress to one cubic centimeter. We're going to do this fast, and so we're going to assume it's adiabatic. In order to do the calculation easily, we're going to assume it's reversible. At least that gives us, in this case, a lower limit on temperature. And we're going to also assume ideal gas law. Again, an approximation. Get the high pressure, that may not be a good approximation. And we're going to calculate the final temperature and also the final pressure in this process. And we're going to do that by applying the first law and using the ideal gas law. So it's a closed system, which means the first law is just dqw plus dq, and of course that's zero. If we write du as cv dt, and we can do that because it's an ideal gas, doesn't matter that's not constant volume, that's always true for an ideal gas. Because it's reversible, we can write work as minus pdv. And then we're going to substitute for pressure in terms of the ideal gas law. And then we're going to separate variables so that we can integrate. So CV on the left side, DV over V. So we're going to integrate from the initial temperature, 300 Kelvin, initial volume 10, final volume of the one, final temperature which we, we don't know. And we do the integration we have a log term on both sides. And now we're going to re do some rearranging. So in this rearrangement, notice I bring CV to the other side of the equation. And when I have something in front of a log, then they become an exponent. Now if I take the exponent of both sides, I have the relation between final initial temperature in terms of the final and initial volumes, minus R over CV. And a reasonable value for R over CV is 2 fifths, 0 0.4. So we can substitute in now the values. We have the final temperature, which we don't know, initial temperature, Kelvin, so we have to use absolute temperature in this calculation. The final volume is 1, initial volume was 10, and minus 0 0.4. If we plug this into a calculator, it's 2.5. So this says our final temperature is 2.5 times 300. So this says our final temperature is 750 Kelvin. Or if we do this in centigrade, 477C. So this simple demo, if we're doing it adiabatically, which means if we do it fast enough, it says we can get to 477 centigrade. The, the final pressure, we go back to the ideal gas law, and the final pressure would be the initial pressure, and then related to volume, and temperature. This is just the easiest way. This is one bar. This ratio is 10. This ratio is 2.5. So it says we're 25 bar pressure and 477 at least centigrade. Of course, we know it's irreversible, which means it's going to take more work to get to the same volume and since D U equals DW. This goes up, this goes up, and since DU is CVDT, that means the temperature is higher. So when it's irreversible, the temperature is going to be higher than 477 degrees centigrade, which means if we look here, the pressure then must be higher than 25 bar.